Welcome back, bench warmers. Well, it looks like we might be running out of that early season luck. Yeah, we definitely don't know how to pick touchdown parlays. That was one of our worst yet. Well, after the first in win, we got a little playing money, so we got to keep going. Yeah, but I'm just tired of losing, though. So you need to spread out these picks a bit. We can't just do this win-loss or touchdown stuff. In this week's I Got Five on it, we're cooking up a potion that'll do just the trick. I'm Corey, known potion drinker. And I'm Brendan, howling for a win. And this is RV from the Bench. Before we get started, if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you never miss any one of the new episodes. Also, if you could please do us the favor, if you like what you see or hear, please don't forget to smash that like button. Come on, smash it for us. It's free. It's free for you. It's free for us. Helps out the channel a lot more than you probably think. Hell yeah. All right, Corey. Well, um, uh, let's quickly go over that we suck at that. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's really nothing to talk about from the last one. No, nah, no, nah, we didn't even get really that close. I mean, how does – okay, we'll break down one of them because some of them were like, um, actually, okay, let me just look because I didn't even look if Jordan Mason – Jordan, oh, Jordan Mason didn't score, huh? No, he did not. Okay, so besides Jordan Mason, that was probably the one that we picked wrong. The reason why I say that is because I'll take one and you'll take the other. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's no freaking way that – like how do you not – how does Tyreek not score? He promised us right. he was going to do something, and he didn't. So one of those legs, I'm blaming it on him. He was excited. He was happy. And most of the time when that happens, he's scoring. You already know the other leg I'm talking about. Break that one down. Uh, which one? I don't even know. They're also uh, The one where somebody else decided to run the ball in instead of the guy that we picked. Uh, okay, so Saquon. This many times. Yeah. Second week in a row to get an anytime touchdown. And – Philly did really good. They scored a lot of points, and they did tush push. I think two times for Jalen Hurts. One of them, Jalen uh, Barkley, ran it all the way down to the one yard line, and the next play they tush pushed it in. I was like, "Oh, come on, give Saquon at least first down opportunity. Yeah, if you can get it, then tush push on second or third. But yeah, now straight to Jalen Hurts. So Hurts scored a ton of touchdowns. Three didn't score any. Yeah, it was a bad jump from the start. Yeah, so that was kind of that one. So we're um, we're, not, we're staying away from touchdowners this week just because, you know, we uh, we didn't do so well. Three, two out of five is not great. Um, again, we're blaming the the Hurts tush push and uh, Tyreek. Uh, Tyreek not keeping his word on, yeah. on those two. But we, we messed up on Jordan Mason. It's just how do they, yeah. they not score a rushing touchdown against the worst rushing defense in the league? Yeah, and they still won. So it still yeah. makes sense. I don't get it. But – that's for another time. We are back today with a new one. Um, this one, like he said in the intro, we're, we're cooking up a little bit of a different potion. Instead of just running with uh, all touchdowns or all win-loss, we're switching it up like crazy. We're doing some win-loss. We're doing some spread. We're doing yardage instead yep. of touchdowns because I feel like that's a little bit more, not guaranteed, but it's more it's easier to get than because on every trip, you either score or only one person scores, whereas trips downfield, multiple people are adding yards, right? Absolutely. Okay, so let's break down the first uh, couple. Well, actually, two of the two, well, four of the picks are in the same game. So I'll start with the non one, and then if you want to break down the next couple. Okay, that sounds good. So the first one that we're going with here is the lowly Bengals. Uh, they just got wiped by the Eagles at home last week, thirty-seven to seventeen, a twenty-point loss. By the way, uh, Saquon scored zero touchdowns in that. I don't know if you remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, moving on though. They are back at home. They need this win like they've been needing the past five that they've lost. Um, and they're hosting the Raiders. Now, as a non – the Raiders are a scary team. I'm pretty sure they've covered every game this year. They're, 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 they're only got two wins, but they're covering the spread, including the one that we bet for them to, for them to lose to the Rams. Yeah. So we were staying far away from the spread on this one, and we're just taking Bengals to win. They're desperate, and the Raiders are on the road. Bengals win. Comments? Oh, God, I hope we get this one right. But, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's the spread thing with the Rams. That was the only one we missed that week when the Raiders uh, covered it on the backdoor field goal in the last couple minutes to make it a yep. five-point game instead of an eight-point game, which whatever. I don't know what that means. But, uh, yeah, hopefully the Bengals – I mean, the Raiders are playing with no quarterback. I don't even know if they're going with McConnell or Minshew. Or they're back and forth at this point. So can't expect a lot from them, and – and the Bengals have been bad mostly, but the last couple of weeks they've been scoring. They just their defense is not very good. So as long yeah, as they give it up thirty seven, it's not yeah. good. So yeah. if they can <laughs> outscore the Raiders and get the win, that's all we care about. I don't care if it's thirty five to thirty four or how many points they win by. Just get the dub. 
Yeah, and and even uh, so, especially division, of course. But Raiders played the Chiefs recently, covered that spread too. Loss, but covered yep. the spread. So they are a dangerous team against the spread. So we're staying away from that and just going money line. Yeah. Next one, my friend. Good idea. All right, so we're going with the Bills and Dolphins game. Obviously, it's a division matchup this weekend. Uh, first off, we're going with Bills as the winner in the money line, just straight up. I think you looked it up. They've won nine of the last ten against. Ten. Yes. Not really expecting a whole lot out of that besides the Buffalo Bills to win. And even with Tyreek excited last week, they didn't score and they lost anyway, right? So what yeah. am I, why would I expect anything different this week from Buffalo? To the Cardinals in yeah. Miami. Makes no so. sense. Yeah, so they're not doing much with that this week. On top of that, what we're doing is uh, Devon Achan, arguably uh, a very elusive at back in the backfield. Uh, we're going with over 30 and a half receiving yards for him. Um, each each game that Tua has played, he's averaged at least seven and a half or s- almost eight targets and over 50 yards as long as Tua has played uh, receiving yards. So he is the pass catching back. Mostert is more of the running back back (laughs) running back um so we're hoping that he can go over the 30 and a half as well oh god the dolphins do run a lot and even with Tua coming back i mean we're expecting them to do a lot of again this is the bills are good and they're it's in miami right if we no it's in buffalo oh then yeah that's why we're taking buffalo money line yeah (laughs) oh yeah you can can run the ball and get some yards all day or whatever but just as long as the bills win that's our main concern as well so Go H and go Bills. Yeah, yeah, H and thirty and a half. I feel like thirty yards, bro. He's averaging fifty yeah. or sixty. One game he has seventy something receiving yards. So yeah. hopefully he could just get us thirty and call it a day. Even if it's only two catches that gets you the thirty-five or forty yards, whatever gets it done. Sir. I'll take it, bro. I'll take it. Just more, just thirty-one or more. Just thirty-one yeah. or more. All we need. <laughs> what you got? All right, last one again. We're going two within the same game. Uh, we're going to Jacksonville Philly matchup this week. I know we talked about Philly and we hated them last week for doing what they did, but we're going back to the well. <laughs> Uh, we're going to go Eagles with a seven and a half point favorite. We're going to have them cover the spread over the Jags. The Jags are really bad this year and have been, you know, played better the last couple weeks, but they still are not good at all. And as I told you before the season started, they are going to be a Jag, just a guy. True, that, true. And Brian but, Thomas, their best. Yeah, very true. And Brian Thomas, their best receiver is is injury with two. He's got a chest injury and a, like a leg injury. Nothing major. He might play, but it's just not looking great line enough for them too. So we do think the Eagles are going to win, uh, but we wanted to try to enti- kind of up the ante a little bit and go with the spread. They beat the Bengals on the road by 20. I'm hoping they can handle the Jags at home by a touchdown. Yeah, I don't. God, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. And because we were burned by Saquon last week with no touchdown, he did go. He did have a great uh, game on the ground and through the air, putting up the yardage. But like Corey said, apparently it stopped at the one, and they didn't care. They didn't want to give it to him. So we're doing a combination on this one. Saquon over 100 rushing and receiving yards combined. The offense basically runs to this full, so um, we're hoping that he could just get that combination. He's done that in every game this year except one. Uh, the Cleveland game, which they won like 19 to 13 or something. It was a really yeah. low scoring game anyways. So um, he's done that in pretty much every game except this one. We're hoping the just a guy defense shows up in Philly. <laughs> yeah, big time. And, you know, it's it, thinking about it in the way you're describing uh, Saquon and what he does. He's kind of Derrick Henry and Derrick Henry's prime in Tennessee when they were really good. Like he, yeah, they, a little more pass catching, but yes. But like everything ran through him. If he got 100%. it, he would catch it out of the backfield and get oh, yeah, no, no, no. But Saquon is better at it, yes. But yeah. overall, I mean, they both have legs the size of probably my entire body, let's be honest, too. Like 100%. I yeah, I wouldn't want to stand in either, in front of either one of them um, as they're making their way down the football field. So, yeah, Derrick Henry's probably a little bit more power and Saquon a little bit more finesse, but they're both, both. Like, yeah, that's a good comparison to be, especially in his heydays in Tennessee. Yes. Like, everything exactly. was off of him. Everything. And as you were describing, like, well, they ran the 50 yards here, and then he got for another seven yards catching. I'm like, yeah, it's Derrick Henry. When, when, the, when, when the Titans were in their prime and winning games and having a chance, Derrick Henry was doing the same shit. So. I'm not going to lie. Derrick Henry's still doing the same thing. I in know. Baltimore, we just I think about it. I'm glad he's doing it somewhere where he at least has a chance. Yeah, I agree. He, he gave your franchise some good oh. years. He stuck it out. Yeah, I know you're not saying it like that. I'm just saying, oh, like, he God. did try. He went through it, and good for him to – he you got look. us to an AFC title game more than I would have ever imagined at that time with that team. So I will never have one bad word to say about Derrick Henry. When he gets in the Hall of Fame, he'll go in as a Titan. So I'm still stoked about it. King Henry. That's for dang oh, sure. Yeah. That's for dang sure. Go. 
Wait, oh, shoot. Actually, Corey, I'm sorry. I think we're, we're getting interrupted here. We have some breaking news. Let's send it out to Corey and Brendan. Thanks, Brendan. And yeah, we're here to get a new update on Nando's Week 9 matchup. Uh, Brendan, Nando, welcome back, everybody. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I don't know if you could see him over there in the corner. <laughs> But we are back. Um, well, we went through, the, I think, what the last thing was the waiver wire. This week was pretty good. We were prepared. Uh, but it's unfortunately wasn't the most important week. Last week was, and we weren't. But we did get, I think, pretty much everybody that we wanted, I think. So we'll throw it up here on the board. Um, Nanda, we'll start with you, man. I know that the biggest thing that you were looking for was Bo Nix. We talked about it in the previous episode. Someone you've been wanting for weeks as a backup to, to Joe. We went with Russell because he had a good first game, but um, you know, after careful consideration, we decided to move on. How are you uh, feeling about Bo? Bo Nix, I I think uh, for being a rookie quarterback, he's for sure gonna gonna make a difference. Uh, you know, we have a lot of quarterbacks that are a lot older that are you know reaching their prime or past their prime, specifically the ones that are supporting our players, uh, yeah, Devontae Adams. To Devontae Adams. Yeah, <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. And dude. It's so true. Uh, you know, it's it's good to have fresh blood on the field. Sometimes like he's going to make bad plays, but there's still lots of bell in him, you know, like mm -hmm. him. And that's why we wanted Burrow, because he's still pretty young, you know. Yeah. He, yeah. he got potential with his age, and it's just always hoping now with the Bo Nicks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know, and we we, t we touched on it briefly last time, Corey, with the connection to Sean Payton, obviously the offensive guru that he is. We're hoping to see Bo Nix blossom, but a really healthy, great Oregon career. I mean, honestly, a long college career in general, but he did great at Oregon. Um, so we're just hoping he kind of carries that over. Yeah. I mean, the you mentioned it, the, the Sean Payton thing. Like he obviously was a coach and then when Drew Brees was able to create like something or of a culture of some sort in New Orleans for the first time. So with Bo Nix, you're like, okay, he's a young kid. He's going to get him from the start instead of when Breeze was kind of a couple years in and already torn his shoulder. Uh, and as the year has gone on, Nix has seen improvement, unlike some other rookie quarterbacks that haven't yeah. figured things out. So in our thinking, it's, okay, there's progression. Hopefully that means we can keep progressing and get better and better because we're going to need him down the stretch, especially if we're going to try to get into the playoffs and do any kind of damage. Yeah, I mean, he's no Jaden Daniels or C.J. No. Stroud of last year, but to your point, each week has been progressively better, and um, that's what we're that's what we're kind of banking on for the rest of the season. He's not necessarily the starter going forward, but he's not also only the guy for Burroughs bye week. You, you touched on it briefly last episode. He's going to be someone that we consider weekly, so uh, we're hoping it pans out for sure. <clears throat> Nando, 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 Nando. <laughs> if there's anything that we need, what would you say that help is where does it where do we need the help most so by technical default besides before answering your actual question we need a kicker but true we also need wide receiver help we constantly need wide Always. receiver help one of the guys that we want to pick up is uh keon coleman we could not we did we couldn't trade for amari but we got the backup Corey, you were excited about this one yeah i think that you know i mean it's not like he's not game changing but no you know. no but buffalo is playing really well they went out and got like you said cooper so now there's like a, a a veteran who can take the top off or at least make them think about him on defense which means then coleman might get some more opportunities so we're kind of banking on that yeah. and you know buffalo tends to play well and before it gets too cold in december and they start running the ball all the time we're hoping we can get coleman going up exactly and josh allen's got a freaking arm dude if they let him play like how he normally plays keon can go off um but you know we'll see we'll see Nando, the next guy we got, I know you mentioned it. We need that <laughs> kicker. I know it's hurting your soul this, this week to not have uh, to not have Chris Boswell. I thought we should go with Tyler Bass from Buffalo, but you're running with Groupie. Yes, I am running with him? Groupie. I am very happy. And funny enough, actually, when when I picked up Groupie and I was reading the alerts I got, it said like 20,000 people dropped Boswell like this week oh. just for that bye week. Yeah, and most I people that's, do. I'm like, that's pretty crazy, but I guess if you had to make that sacrifice just for the week and hope hope you get it back. Yeah, you know some people have a lot of good receivers on their team that they don't need to, uh, thank you know. Thank you, thank you. Exactly. Exactly. We constantly we need don't. that crap. So. <laughs> some people are like, oh, my slots are filled, we're good to go, we could switch kickers in and out. Unfortunately, that's one of our best players, so <laughs> <laughs> not someone we could just switch in and out. We need him damn near every week to keep us viable. So. But it is what it is. Um, the last piece... 
And I want you to talk about this a little bit, Corey. <sighs> we had to drop Jalen McMillan. Not necessarily bad. He didn't do great week one. Mike Evans is coming back. And so he might blossom with Mike Evans back, getting some of the attention. He just didn't look like he had a great connection with, uh, with Baker Mayfield. Yeah. But I say that we dropped him mostly because Deontay Johnson um, – was it's Johnson, right? Deontay Johnson. Yeah. It, it was our receiver that was recently traded. Uh, I don't know if there could have been a worse freaking team for our fantasy purposes that he could have yeah. been traded to, but we had to drop uh, Jalen because Deontay is off the IR. Talk a little bit about where we stand with that one, dude, with those receivers. Yeah, now. We were really hoping he was going to go to Kansas City. That's where we thought we would really get some bread. Or I was thinking Houston, too, bro, because yeah. they're out two receivers, you know, with That's CJ. But to end up, yeah, it just it just hurts us because now we already have Zay Flowers, and we did bait it even playing him last week because Lamar already kind of spreads it out even. And now you bring him in there. It's like, okay, well, now I don't even know. Now we got two receivers <laughs> on a team that who knows who's going to have the hot days. So that just exactly. Happened. So we can't play both of them because if they both do nothing, then we essentially wasted the wide receiver position. But we got to pick one possibly, but which one is it? It's week to week. It's So, yeah, it, we're really hoping for other teams, but this is what it is. So now we got to figure it out. I don't know. It's a mess. Yeah. Wide one thing that a mess since day one, and we've talked. Yeah, about very it. true. Very true. Well, un, unfortunately, Fernando, you know, being new and having 30 seconds to prepare, having Devonte Adams as our number one receiver pick is kind of hurting us this time. But. It's fine. It is what it is. We're trying to push through. Again, four and four, bro. That's not terrible. It's not bad. So, um, One of the things that uh, we were talking about, though, as it relates to you know the, the Ravens, and Nando actually touched on it. Now, he didn't mention it from Deontay, but he mentioned it from like a Jawan Jennings or something like that, is now that Deontay is on a better team, I did see somebody that I did see that Puka Nakua got hurt at practice today. Uh -oh. Perhaps we could look at a the whoever has Puka offer some Deontay Johnson. Hey, you know, going to we don't need anything crazy back, but maybe a, another similar wide receiver, a ten point a week kind of projection guy. That way we can at least split up our you know responsibilities at receiver at least by team, not having two basically their number one and number two not killing their tight ends, but the number one and number two receiver we got them both. So potential for trade. I know Nando's always kind of got his GM hat on. He's looking for. Not only trade targets, but free agency pickups and, and whatnot. So I thought of that as an option, again, with uh, people who might have uh, Reishi Rice or the people who might have uh, – who just got hurt? Stefan Diggs or Puka Nukua. Like some of these big yeah. receivers are kind of going down. May not hurt to have a guy on the Ravens offense that can score. Granted, they run, but Lamar can throw too. There's a reason why he's a MVP. Yeah, very true, very true. Yeah, we'll have to keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. So okay, well that was the uh, that was the waiver wire this week. We had another another difficult decision as we seem to always have uh, weekly for the wide receiver position. But here's what we're running with on our lineup this week. Um, I'm honestly kind of confident in the lineup besides Devonte Adams, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's just it's so rough. I know <laughs> they're playing right now. You can see from the screenshot. You know we've taken the screenshot a little bit afterwards. They've started, but you know one one point so far is not necessarily the best start. Um, Nando, you and I discussed this earlier, though. There wasn't really much of an option of else to take, dude. Like, Brian Thomas may not even play. He's kind of our only good, good option besides Zay and Deontay, who are on the same team. Exactly. Very much so. It's it's just a huge risk. And I, I just checked the score right now. Guess what? He scored us another point eight points. So woo! he's getting there eventually. Hey, if he not... gets a point a quarter, woo, get crazy. Yeah. Four yeah, points but... is better than zero. So, yeah, I'd like to get closer to 10. If we could grab 10 from him, that'd be nice. But yeah, I, I won't hold my breath. That's for damn sure. Yeah. So this is the lineup. Um, I wanted to ask you, is there anybody that you on, on their team that you can see having a, a game that could kind of knock us out? Ooh, well, looking at his new release team i just noticed uh jacoby myers for some reasons on his team i'm not really as much worried about him just uh a difference in players now so mm -hmm. that gives me like a a, a better feeling against cincinnati because that's where i have burrow playing where's amari cooper uh he's actually not oh, i don't even want to play him but he didn't want to no. give it to us what the heck <laughs> guess so he's also playing tua after his injury so i'm, oh, I'm okay. hoping that back that he's just hoping for wins as much as I am with Devontae. But I am worried about Justin Jefferson. That's the one I was looking at. Being a wide receiver scoring 15 points. The one that's... And Olave as well. 
The one that scares me the most is Alave because Carolina is not very good. Oh, New Orleans isn't good either, but because they're a division opponent and they know each other well, they could score a lot of points. So, like, all of a sudden, Olave has got three catches for two touchdowns and 110 yards. You know, just true. I don't is, know. Uh, is Derek Carr back? I don't know. It doesn't even matter. I just, for some reason, like, that's the one I'm looking at. This is like, oh, oh shit. Olave Derek, gets sir, yeah. Quarterback Derek Carr set the start versus Panthers after missing three games. Yeah, yeah. That's the one I'm worried about. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I was hoping that he was not going to start so we could go with a third string quarterback. Maybe they just give it to Amari, uh, not Amari Cooper. Um, Alvin Kamara. Alvin Kamara, thank you. And and he just has a day because that's obviously not how we're playing. But unfortunately, that's not the case. There are some decent matchups for us, though, here. David Montgomery, the Detroit running back, he's playing at Green Bay. Division opponent, yeah. that's going to be right. tough. Um, his his uh, tight end, Kate Otten, who went off last week with two touchdowns during tight end weekend, is playing at Kansas City on a Monday night. That's going to be a little bit more tough. Kansas mm-hmm. City with the best defense in the league. So we're not out of it yet. Um but, you know, right now we're projected to win by seven. That's with Devontae getting around 12 points. So that's probably not going to happen. Uh, right now, after this game, I'm assuming we're going to be about even going into the weekend. So you still confident, bro? Hey, you know, CJ Stroud's not doing good. Devontae's not doing good. It's just a bunch of uh, not so good back so and far, forth huh? from both teams. Well, he's not playing so, CJ, so I don't know I was that like, matters. CJ so. Stroud's not even playing. We're not worried about CJ Stroud. I mean, I'm, 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 hope, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'm hoping he pops off more because CJ Stroud isn't. Just a just a little bit. So gotcha. that we can get more sacks, more more interceptions, just more opportunities to have the ball and pass it to Devontae Adams. Devontae. No, I feel you. I feel okay. you. That's what I mean, we need, bro. I, mean, I like I like it. I get the principle of what you're saying for sure. So uh all right. Well, any uh last second turn uh, uh comments, gentlemen? No? Uh week nine. Let's uh let's try to get over five hundred here, huh? Come on. Five and four, baby, let's get it. <laughs> All right, well, since we got all our updates and we're ready for week nine matchup, let's go ahead and toss it back to Brendan and Corey. Thank you, Corey. Well, we're looking pretty good. Um, yeah. You know, fantasies, you know, kind of – we'll see how Devontae turns out. It, this isn't looking great to start, but we'll see how it uh, finishes. Make sure that you check out the episode that comes up on Monday to see how we finish this week. Uh, again, not as a great start for Devante, but hopefully the game finishes a lot better than it started for him. Um, but we'll yeah, see from that. We need a win and we need wide receiver. Hell, we've been talking yeah. about for three months already. Please, Devante, just show up for us, bro. <laughs> We're banking on it, dude. <laughs> but, you know, let us know in the comments below what you think about this parlay. Are you happy we're staying away from the touchdowns because we kind of suck at that? We did get back to the uh, win loss one, so let us know if you're if you're following this one or uh, you know if you got any other ones cooking up. Yeah, let us know. We want to win some money. We want to win. We want to win. We want to win. Like, uh, follow us on Instagram or Twitter at RviewFTB. You can comment there or leave any, uh, again, parlays or ideas you guys got for some bets. We're open yep. to all. Yep, we'll respond to the comments and everything. So just let us know. But other than that, appreciate everybody for stopping by. Thank you, as always, for seeing things from RV from the bench. I'm Brandon. And I'm Corey. Like we always say, enjoy the sports until we talk again. Peace. This was a Sycamore 4th Studios production.